Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. We have a new collaboration tutorial today between myself and Alessandro Bancio from Render King. And he came up with this great idea for making tile floors that are really, really realistic. So we're gonna do that today. If you look at this render, you can see that we have this great texture that has a lot of grunge on it. And this is using our Blemish Pro, which has a hundred different grunge maps. And you can see that we just have a really basic material on here. And if we take one of our grunge maps and pipe that into the reflection roughness, you can see all the realism that we add here. But we're gonna be talking about how to randomize these tiles so that they look realistic. And we're gonna jump into a new scene. So first thing we're gonna do in the new scene is we're gonna change our layout. We're gonna to go to Window, Customization, Layout, and we're gonna change that to Sculpting. So we're gonna sculpt a tile here. So let's add a cube, and let's go to our attributes, and we'll change the Y to four. And this is gonna be one of our tiles. All right, so we're gonna add a bunch of segments, maybe 25, four, and 25. If we go to Grout Shading, you can see what we're doing here. Adding a bunch of segments here. We'll add a fillet here. Probably make that fillet quite small and a little bit less subdivision in the fillet. All right, so now we're gonna sculpt this. So we're gonna make this editable by going to our object, the cube, and hitting C to make it editable. And then in our sculpting panel, we're gonna click subdivide. And we'll probably click it maybe three times and we'll have a result something like this. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is start uh, dinging up these edges with the knife tool. So if we click the knife tool and I show you what this does, you can see that the power is way too strong and the size is way too big. So let's make a few tweaks here to our size. We'll just make that really small, maybe two. Make the pressure very low, 1%, and the length we can kick up to 30%. And now if I click, you can see that we are really damaging the edges of this tile, and it's very quick. We can just paint on a little bit of random damage, and uh, this is gonna look really nice once we put it in the cloner. All right, so there you go. I've already done two sides. Let me spin around and do the other sides, and I'll fast forward for you. All right, so I've painted all the edges, and you can see that I might've gone a little too far right here, and that's pretty easy to fix. Just go to the smoothing option and take the pressure down a little bit, and then you can click here and just kind of smooth it out. All right, so here's our tile. It's looking really nice, and what we're gonna do is go to current state to object. So we're gonna right click on it, go to current state to object, and it's gonna give us two copies. We'll disable the original one with the sculpting tag, and let's take the other one and put it into a cloner. So we'll go to MoGraph cloner, and we're gonna change it from a linear to a grid array. And just like that, you can see the power of this technique in that all of these seams inside the tiles have all this nice grunge in them. Uh, they're kind of dinged up and worn, and we're already getting a really nice result. The problem with this technique is that if you sculpt a very obvious detail into this, um, it's going to repeat. And the more of these tiles you have, the more obvious that pattern is going to be. So for instance, if we go back to our original one here, I'm just gonna make a very obvious uh, change here. So we'll go to inflate, and let's just add a little inflated bubble here. And uh, let's go ahead and go to current state to object again. We'll uh, disable that original one and put the other one into the cloner. All right, so here's what I was talking about. You can very obviously see the repetition and this blemish is on the exact same part of that tile every time. So we want to randomize this, right? And every time you're doing things with tiles, you want to do as much randomization as possible. So you might go to Effector, Random Effector, and then you would go to the parameters and turn off the position and turn on the rotation. And we want this to go to 90 degrees, but the problem is it's not snapping to 90 degrees, it's interpolating all the degrees in between it. So that's not gonna work. So Alessandro found a nice little hack here and we're going to be using the formula effector. So go to MoGraph effector and formula effector. And we're going to do the same thing, turn off the position and scale, and we're gonna turn on the rotation and we're gonna rotate that up to 90 but we want this to snap to 90 degree increments, right? And we want it to be random. So we actually have a formula for doing this. And I'm not a math guy, so I don't really understand formulas very well, but I will copy and paste this into the description and you can copy and paste this formula. Uh, I have no idea what it means, except for that it's gonna randomize these at 90 degree increments. So if we paste that in here, and just like that, we now have that blemish that has been kind of rotated and put in a random spot. All right, so that's a quick way to make really realistic floors. Hope you guys found that useful. Thanks as always for supporting the site, and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.